today we're talking about something that sounds ripped straight out of a sci-fi novel. Scientists just showed that they can flick a magnetic switch and have living cells pump out whatever protein they programmed. No wires, no needles, just an external field. It's called wireless gene programming and it uses nanoparticles inside the cell itself. It's equally a medical miracle and a little bit spooky. All right, let's dive in and see what kind of physics lets us remote control DNA. I'm Ben, this is Physics or Bust. So first, the nanoparticle itself. Picture a gobstopper, only 40 billionths of a meter wide. And its heart is magnetite, that's iron oxide, with a property called super paramagnetism. Translation, when there's no magnetic field, the particles act chill and non-magnetic, which means they don't clump in the bloodstream. But the minute you apply an alternating magnetic field, bam, all those little atomic bar magnets flip around and soak up energy. At a slippery biocompatible glaze, and at only 40 nanometers wide, these magnetoelectric nanoparticles slip right into the cell. Now the fun part. How do we change that magnetic energy that the core absorbed into something the cell can feel? There's two types of nanoparticles that, that researchers have been using magnetothermal and magnetoelectric. For a magnetothermal nanoparticle, those flipping magnetic domains create friction at the nanoscale, Neil and Brownian relaxation, if you want to sound smart at parties. The friction releases heat, but it's an extremely local heat spike. With the volume that gets a hot spot, literally measured in femtoliters. The bulk tissue hardly budges in temperature, but the promoter sitting right next to it feels like it's in a sauna and kicks the gene into high gear. In the latest study, the team used magnetoelectric nanoparticles as opposed to magnetothermal. They wrapped the magnetite core in a piezoelectric shell. Materials like barium titanate. When the core jiggles in the alternating magnetic field, it squeezes the piezo layer. Basic high school physics? Squeeze a piezo and the material changes the mechanical energy into electrical energy and you get a voltage. Here, that voltage is only a few millivolts, but spread only over a few nanometers. So the electric field is really strong. The nanoparticle's vibration makes a millisecond long electric nanopulse. This trips nearby calcium channels, so calcium floods in, and a calcium sensitive promoter says, yep, time to transcribe. And then boom, insulin, dopamine, or whatever gene you've attached starts pouring out. Pull the magnetic field away and the gene goes quiet again. It's like having a dimmer switch for biology. So you might be asking, why 40 nanometers? Well, when the nanoparticles get around 100 nanometers, they stop being super paramagnetic, which would mean they'd clump in the bloodstream and be bad news. And if you go too small, the core can't carry enough magnetic moment to heat or squeeze anything. So since we're looking not too big, but not too small, the Goldilocks zone is around 15 to 30 nanometers for the core and another five to 10 nanometers for the outer shell. Now, since this process utilizes an alternating magnetic field, that means an electromagnetic wave, but at what frequency? They run these experiments at around 100 to 500 kilohertz lower than AM radio and way lower than the 64 megahertz of an MRI. That keeps eddy current heating of the human tissue basically non-existent, while still flipping those nanomagnets over 100,000 times a second. The lab trick to visually see this process in action is to tag the gene with something flashy, green fluorescent protein, luciferous. They pulse the coil, wait a few minutes, and the dish literally lights up. In mice, they switch the green fluorescent protein with insulin or interleukin-2. Then they monitor blood glucose or tumor size. When the coil is off, expression drops back to baseline, full on-off control. So there's the design of the nanoparticle. A magnetite core for power, a mechano or piezoelectric shell for conversion, and a promoter that treats the nanoscopic nudge like a megaphone. No wires, no battery packs, just physics doing its thing. Now here's where this gets fun. Treatment of diseases and ailments. Diabetes, instead of jabbing yourself every day, you could wear a little RF patch. 10 minutes of pulses and engineered cells under your skin can generate enough insulin to flatten that glucose curve. Cancer, 
Doctors could park these particles inside the tumor and command the cells to drip chemo-grade cytokines only when they're at the clinic, that way they're under observation and the rest of the body is spared. One mouse study cut systemic toxicity in half. Nervous system disorders? Neuroscientists have already sprinkled magnetoelectric nanodisks onto neurons and made them fire on cue. No electrodes in the brain. Imagine controlling epilepsy or Parkinson's tremors wirelessly. And because if they swap their promoter, they swap the gene, they could in theory build a single universal cell therapy and just decide the function afterwards. But I do have a couple reality checks for you. The particles do need to reach the right tissue. In today's experiments, that means local injection, loading cells in a dish before implantation, or an IV drip followed by a steering magnet. Then there's FDA approval, assurance of long-term safety, fully defined rules, still works in progress. But the physics says it's doable, and the early data is fairly promising. So that's the fun side of it, but what about the spooky side? So let's address that elephant, or maybe spy, in the room. Because the trigger signal is invisible and the nanoparticles are too small to feel, biosecurity folks should be looking at bond level abuse scenarios. Here's just one scenario. Someone secretly injects a target person with a microneedle injection patch, just through a handshake or other similar gesture. Or aerosol delivers particles that have a clotting factor gene. Days, or even weeks later, the target stands near a podium or sits at a place where there's a hidden coil, maybe under a conference podium. Then a silent RF pulse tells the particles, go! Minutes later, the target's bloodstream is a minefield of microplots. Hard to trace because you'd actually have to find the nanoparticles inside the body, and the target dies of a heart attack or stroke. Is it likely? Not today. The doses are high and the magnetic field has to be pretty strong, but it is technically possible, which should be enough for regulators to start sharpening the rulebook. So, wireless gene programming. A future where your medication is literally programmed. And a great reminder that with great power comes great responsibility. So what interests you most about this tech? The diabetes fix, the neurohack, or the spy threat? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'd like this book. I have an affiliate link in the description below. I do get a small commission, but it doesn't cost you any extra. For more updates on space, science, and technology, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember, keep asking questions. I'll see you on the next video.